So just to let the people know, this guy owns nine rental properties. Is that including the land too? That includes the land. Damn. And Sweet. you did that. So you said you got your first one at the age of 20. You're only 22 now. Two, two years. Yeah. So you're moving. Ah, yeah, you're making moves. Son. Two years, like two and a half, almost three in, in million in real estate. So what, what's the idea there? Like how, I guess what I'm trying to ask is how do you manage all of that? How are you managing all these different properties with like and all the other shit he has going yeah, on? Yeah, everything too. else you have going on. So it definitely takes a great team. Um, so I have management in place for two of the rental properties. Um, so that's cool. Like I just checked my bank account when we were sitting here waiting, like that that rent's about to deposit. And then the other local stuff, it's it's higher like value real estate. Yeah. It's like Chester County real estate, it's mm. not cheap. So the tenant, the quality of the tenants are pretty good, yeah. but my assistant manages that. So we have a CRM called Avail. It's a rental property um, management software. All the leases, all the pre-pictures, everything's set up. All the auto payments are set up through there. Yeah. Any calls or issues my tenants have, they call the office or, or my assistant and, you know, she kind of handles it and we have systems and procedures um, and contractors on our list. So, so she knows who to call all that kind of stuff is yeah. handled. I don't want any contact with tenants and I've made that, you know, very clear amongst yeah. my team. So that's how I handle it. The land is more direct to me. It's like contractors. Mm -hmm. I'm in and out of there. My team's in and out of there. Um, so that's how I manage that. And then obviously on the back end, I have a great accounting team. Yeah. Um, all that kind of stuff, dude. It's just, it's just people. Yeah. You need a good squad. Like I think that uh, Rob Kiyosaki talks about that. Like you have to have people who are smarter than you to take care of the stuff that you're not too knowledgeable in. Like this IT Jesus here just helped us set the whole <laughs> thing. Yes. And I'm like, thank the Lord. Cause I know. it was just me and you. And we might've had a tougher time doing this, but yeah. like, are you filming it on my fucking iPhone? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like lawyers, um, even doctors to some respect with like athletes and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, accountants, all those types of people who can handle all that supportive shit. family. I yes. mean, I live, I still live at home. Um, and my mom, you know, she like, getting these mortgages, dude. I'm yeah. not a paper push. Like I, I love to talk to people and I want to be a paper pusher, which yeah. means like I'm doing, like I'm using my name to, to take on debt at 8% with intentions, yeah. all that kind of stuff. But like, she'll literally get my docs from my accountants and upload them to the things like mm. little stuff like that does add up. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm And then my assistant, like I don't go on word and edit these proposals. Like I tell her what I need and she, she produces it. And mm. then I just forward it off to my, you know, person or just all that kind of stuff. It, it really helps out. When did you develop like these money managing skills? Cause I would imagine that all happened pretty fast. It definitely did. And it came from uh, learning lessons. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. like my business, CMG landscaping, it's project based, right? Mm -hmm. So it goes like this. Now I know four months out of the year is, um, is my slow months, July, August, January, and February. Yeah. Cold. It's really cold out, right? I'd imagine. January and February, exactly. And then July and August, all my clientele are at their beach houses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Traveling. So, um, so it just comes from, you know, learning lessons. It comes from, like, I always love money, bro. Like, yeah. since I went to the bank deposit, yeah. like, I'm just into it. That's, like, me. So, um, I set up the right business lines of credit and just all that kind of stuff comes together. Mm. Are you staying in tune with, like, what's happening in the world and stuff like that? In terms, in regards to like money and uh, like economics and stuff like that. Economics, I'm really into like, this might sound so weird, you know, <laughs> and I know I come off as like a bro type and I am, but like when I go to bed, I'll put on like meet Kevin or like Kevin O'Leary or these guys that literally talk about like macroeconomics, yeah. what the Fed's doing with interest rates, yeah. you know, what China just did against U.S. Like, like yeah. it doesn't even matter to a little landscaper, but I'm just, I just like learning about it. Yeah. You think you'll be a billionaire one day? A hundred percent. Yeah. Ooh, that's, that's the goal. That's the so, goal? <laughs> um, yeah. So like, I'm interested to know like what your perception is of money, because at one point I'm like, due to my understanding, it was backed off of gold, right? Mm -hmm. The gold standard, it was like 1972. US dollar, yep. Yeah. And so it's no longer like that. It's now fiat money. So um, money is largely based off of our illusion of what we believe it's worth. Right. So like we, yes. we, like you and I agree that $5 is worth $5, like a Jerry's pie. You don't know what Jerry's is. Cause it's like a small pizza shop in our area, but we agree that $5 is worth $5. Yep. That's the idea. Right. Yep. So with that information, like how do you perceive money in the world? Well, what I would like to say to that one part is like now the U S dollars strength is based off the world's trust and like respect to it. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, that's one aspect of it. How I now think of money is, is very much like a tool and it's, I'm way more fluid with it. Right. Mm -hmm. Like I would have never two, three years ago spent money on a podcast, 
spend money on like just to just apps and stuff. I, I like, or whatever you want to call it. So, um, so now I just look at it as a tool. It just flows from one account to the next or it goes, you know, it's just, I don't know. That's how yeah. I look at it. That's like a lot of what, um, enhancing your money mindset is about like in rich dad, poor dad, he talks often about how poor people have like this attachment to money and how they like want to keep it so bad. They want to save it so bad and they don't want to let it, let it go to just anything, you mm. know, which I think is pretty interesting when people who are really in the game and there's money being transacted from all different places, like they see it more as something that just comes and goes. And it's just, it's more of an abundance kind of mindset. I think. 100%. And, and as you get into business, I'm still a young guy. I'm trying to learn that though. That's what yeah. I'm yeah. And it's, it's a skill and it's, and it's like mindsets are hard to break. Habits yeah. are yeah. very hard to break. And that's yeah. how I started. I was, I was a little kid just trying to stack my bank mm-hmm. accounts and like yeah. I was 12 buying CDs with $2,000 like, and trying to make the little amount of interest. But um, as you grow in business, and this is why business is so important to start and like hustle yourself because mm-hmm. uh, you just, you'll, you just like one day you'll be sitting and realizing, well, damn, millions of dollars have came in and out of this account. And it's like, then the next day you wake up and it's like, oh, you got a, you got a $5,000 bill or you're writing, you know, six G's to the IRS and, you know, four G's to your account. And it's like, it just kind of flows. Some days yeah. you're a lot richer than others. Mm-hmm. And you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. How do you stay like on top of the morality of that side of the whole business game? Like with the money coming in, coming out, like how do you, I guess like what's your plan to always ensure that you're growing? So you, you know, I like that question. Um, how do I ensure I'm always growing? I'm, I'm always, I'm always thinking about the next step or the next five. Right. But I'm always focused on the very next yeah. step. Um, and like, I, I'm again, I'm like a math guy. So if I'm, if I want to do, you know, my goal was to hit two and a half million this year. Mm. We'll probably do 1.7, 1.8. Mm. My goal is to hit 5 million next year. God, so man. like, I'm always just the numbers guy. Five and million what? Like your portfolio? In revenue. Oh, okay. My business. A year. Yes. Yeah. So, um, so I just back into the numbers yeah. and then I back into like, all right, is it going to be me selling? Mm. I want to hire a salesman. Um, And is that strictly landscaping you're talking about in terms of revenue or is that your whole thing? Strictly landscaping. Wow. You're making, you're making $3 million a year landscaping or $1.7 million a year landscaping. In revenue. Yep. Wow. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. Holy come on. Yeah. We did, we did like 948,000 in the first six months this, this season. Now the the second half of the season, it slowed down a bit. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Money's out there. Yeah. A hundred percent, brother. You gotta go get it. You, you gotta hustle. And so yeah. one thing I noticed, right? So first six months, my PL's coming back. I'm a fucking baller. I'm talking to jet brokers and shit yeah. like that. And still talk to them. Um, and then like it started to slow down, right? People went out to uh yeah. vacations and shit. And so now I'm back in like I'm in hustle mode. So I try to put all my team out in the field all day and I'm sitting at a desk this size, hustling clients getting bids out, annoying people, yeah. getting like, getting me, you know what I'm saying? And literally it works and you just keep picking up checks and like, yeah. you know, like I just said, July, August are my slow months, right? I got slow months. I got money going out yeah. for real estate. So it just, it comes and goes, it yeah. flows. Yeah.